I, I don't think he does. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, we won't know, we want to tell him. So we're live. Hey, come everybody. We're in the solo session for All for One Regime Diabolique Musketeer Role Playing. And tonight we're having Philippe Moreau, who will have a small adventure of his own. Since he's recovering from some wounds he had, um, well, I can consider that this adventure will take place um, when your wound is done. But you know, you have been attended by uh, the physician from Mr. de Trevi, so he, he, I, you know, he made the uh, your healing faster. Thank God. Let's consider that you're fully healthy. We'll decide about the time after that. So, yeah, we'll drink the official drink. Oh yes, that's right. I don't have any official drink today. I feel I feel so out of place. <laughs> yet, uh, it's a French version of diet. <laughs> we like it. We like it. Uh, I only have no, I have nothing but seltzer water and coffee. I feel so. So ill prepared to save France. <laughs> oh yeah, well let's we'll kickstart this with not our official drink on your side. Okay, all right. Um, let's start with this. We're in December sixteen thirty six. Okay, everything starts. You're in the hall of the musketeers, you know, the uh, well, the hotel of Mr. de Trevi. There are many musketeers gathered there uh, because D'Artagnan is telling a story. Someone, a new musketeer, asked, Mr. D'Artagnan, what happened the first time you came in Paris? And he, he talks about how it happens and how he joined the three other famous musketeers in a fight in the Carmelites convent against Cardinal guards. And he, right now he's, he's, he's describing what he did to Jusak, which is a Cardinal guards. And yeah, I, I launched forward trying to make a feint, but I saw in his eyes that he saw my feint coming, but he didn't saw my kick coming. And you no, know, you have the cheers of all the musketeers because it tells a story that he's probably told many, many times before. You are with all the other musketeers. And, you know, D'Artagnan is a good, he, he really, he's really in it when he's describing this. And, you know, there are cheers, laughter, you know, people have, are having fun right now. They're waiting for the orders of Mr. Uh, Captain de TV, which is not that. You know, he's not in his desk upstairs. You know, he, he, they're waiting for them. He has to come back from somewhere. At some point, D'Artagnan points you. Moreau, I'll, I'll try to make a demonstration using you. you uh, you're good with your blade. I am. Yeah. And uh, you, there are people, you know, you're at Denis beside you, clapping your back. Oh, go ahead. So just take a stance in front of me. Mr. Moreau. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I smile. I, I, I adopt. I adopt a stance and, and look about. Look about myself. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have a stance of a musketeer, but you have you have to depict a, a cardinal's guard. Or do how do they stand? No, oh, I, I, I uh, slope my shoulders. I slouch a little bit. I try to look surly, undisciplined. Yeah. And oh, there's lots of laughter around. And then D'Artagnan say, okay, raise your sword. Just want to show something to the, to all the musketeers. And you know, he's, he's, he's raising his sword. We'll try to make a, a practice stance just for you, Philippe. So I raise my sword. I try to look sloppy. Yeah. Well, he, he comes to you. Well, he comes to you and you <laughs> go ahead. It is very hard for me to look sloppy. I'm so good, but I will try. <laughs> and then he comes to you, and as fast as he can, he tries to disarm you. Do you let yourself do it? No. All right. <laughs> He's going well, to roll the dice for real. Roll the dices for that. 
Okay. Kind of a defense, I guess, or yeah, defense. All righty, I will. I will just roll straight defense, I believe. I will. All right. Yes. Oh, and it's three. Oh man, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He comes by, disarmed, and that's how I took out Jusak. He didn't have his weapon in his hand, and hey, and he's slapping on your shoulder. Huh? What do you do without your weapon now, Mo? Show us, show that to us. Oh, I, I'm still wondering how the hell he got my sword out of my hand that fast. You know, he must have. It must have been lucky. You can see uh, Jacques away with his sword. You wonder why he's there, but <laughs> uh, I, I, I draw out my mangosh and look at him again. I tried to tremble, but I, I cannot well, tremble. I'm Philippe. Although. It's some sort of a practice and a, a, a story to, it tells. You can feel his gaze and blood boiling inside of it, like if he's really in it. And you know, he's trying to, to, to get around you and say and try to, well, to fight you. He doesn't want to, uh, uh, to wound you, but he, yeah, he's trying to fight you. Are you trying to do something with your Magosh? Give a lesson to your higher ranking uh, legend. <laughs> You know, I, I'm so torn. I want to. <laughs> I want to, but I do that. I just am red faced. Like, I want to teach him a lesson. But I look around, I think this would not be good. So finally, I drop my main ghost and say, I yield. I yield. And But I look about myself for, for applause and attention as I try to make myself look like a, a Cardinal's guard. There are some laughters, and you have uh, Dennis making a prank on you and pushing you on the back, pushing you on D'Artagnan. <laughs> <laughs> and you have D'Artagnan, you know, taking you, oh, you're trying to beat me, and he, 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 he's, he's beginning to be a little angry, but at, he's taking you by the collar. That's an insult. Oh. Man, I'm in it now. <laughs> Suddenly, by the end of the room, by the entrance of this building, the doors open and you can hear strong voice, Mr. De Trevi calling, Moro! Oh, saved by the bell. Oh, I'm sorry. I grab, grabbed D'Artagnan by the shoulders. I am sorry. We, we must talk some more, but I, I must go. Yes, yes, Mo I'll be right there. Jacques, my sword. You can hear your own echo because there's a big silence. Because the, in Mr. De Trevi's face, there's a, a strange look, very severe look. I'm waiting. Yes, right, right away, sir. Right away. I, I run to Jacques to give me my 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 sword, and I then I run upstairs. Yeah, he drops it on the floor, takes it back, <laughs> and they give it to you. Uh, yeah, all. Uh, and yeah, so he, 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 Mr. Trivi is waiting for you, almost tapping his foot on the floor. Yeah, and I run upstairs looking flustered, putting my sword back in my scabbard. Yes, sir. What is it? It's an urgent mission. I need you. Of course, right away, sir. I look around to see if anyone has heard the fact that I'm getting an urgent mission. <laughs> well, the, the people are seeing you. Because Mr. Trevi is well, he's not, he's not running, but he's walking fast towards a, a carriage that is waiting by the door of the outer court of uh, the Musketeers Barrack. Right. I shout this back. Is... I shout back to Jacques. I must go on an urgent mission for Mr. Trevi. I will be back. I say this probably a little too loud. <laughs> well, people are having big eyes because they're looking at the cart. They're looking at both of you going. How is it? It's a royal cart. The cart that is bringing the king himself. <sighs> king. Now I am red-faced once again, but I, I'm trying to get unsloppy. And all the wrinkles I put in my uniform, trying to slouch like a Cardinal's guard, I am 
stand upright as much as I can, puff my chest out. The king. Okay. Get in. Ready. Get in the cart. Yes, sir. So I leap into the cart. Yeah. Well, there's no there's no one here, but it's a very luxurious cart. You've never been in a place like this. It's more luxurious than any rooms you ever got in. Oh. Seems comfortable. It's beautiful. Well, so some decorated curtains, all broidered in with gold and list flowers. Very you nice. Have Mr. You have Mr. Trevi, he sit down and he's closed the door and he, he's, he's hitting, you know, the wall to, to tell uh, the, the guy driving this. <laughs> okay. And the cart is, uh, is rolling in the street of Paris. And you have Mr. Trevi. It's a little urgent, but, uh, well, it's a mission for the king himself. For the king, sir? Yes. Well, tell you the truth, uh, you're probably the only one I can send on this mission with the others that will be there. Really? Why? Well, you... You're great with your, with your sword. And not only that, you have the nurse who may, to maybe face those folkloric dangers they're talking about. Yes, I understand, sir. The Spanish spies, without a problem. It's just get beyond me, but uh, I, I don't think, I don't want to send uh, Alphonse there. He's not as fast as you with your sword. Martin, who always seems tired. You're the only one I can send. You're young, you're strong. And frankly, it's just to reassure the people you're going to accompany because it's maybe just rumors. What's maybe just rumors, sir? They'll tell them yourself, themselves. As you can see, you can see that the, the card by the window is going towards the Louvre. Going straight on the right place. And no, Mister. There's someone, a valet, opening the door in the Louvre, and uh, you have some escorted guard escorting you into the building. All so right. You're, you're following the, the the leads there, I guess. Right. You're not trying to climb a window. <laughs> no, no. I'm walking into the Louvre, not guarding, not trying to climb in, almost as an honored guest, thinking yeah. to myself. You know, I think I wonder aloud, like, you know, Alphonse will never believe this. I'm looking at the carts, I'm looking at the guard, I'm like, I hope he sees me. <laughs> the Sir 3 is still very serious, is getting just in front of you. Oh. Putting, and looking at you, looking at your uniform and trying, you know, to, to place your uniform. You don't have to be in front of the king like that. And he's just placing your tabard, your hat. I, I, I guess... This will be okay. Okay. I, I, I stand, try to look as dapper as possible. Right. And he goes directly to a salon. Entering the salon, there are a couple of people there. Okay. Of course, you can see the king sitting in a big chair. Doesn't look looks like feeling well, you know. He's holding holding his belly, and you know he's try, he has his eyes closed. Try he's suffering somehow. He's with some sort of a physician who is talking to him, and there are other people in the place. A old Mister standing up, looking at you with medals. He has been in part of many wars before. The Siege of La Rochelle, one of them, you can see the, the medal. There are two guys, uh, all dressed in black and gray, uh, seem seemingly uh, the same color of that mister I've described you. They're more look like uh, soldiers, probably, of his company. And within the room, you didn't see him at first, but beside the king, just behind him. The cardinal is there. The cardinal. 
Yeah, looking at you with a very serious gaze, trying to see every inch of your body. And you have Mr. Trevi beside you saying, I have brought the musketeer I told you about, Monsieur Le Roy. And you have the king telling to the physician in front of him, waving and trying to compose himself and looking at you. That's the first time you cross the gaze of Mr. Louis XIII. <laughs> I, I bow, I bow, your majesty a little bit too low I flourish my hat just a little bit too much trying to impress him and I, I, I nod my head towards the cardinal my cardinal put my hat back on don't bow quite as low don't flourish my hat quite as much cardinals you know we're making something with his eyebrow and uh, so you have mr. Zerbe. so monsieur Leroy your eminence this is Philippe Moreau, musketeer, probably uh, the one I can uh, recommend to this sort of mission. You have the mister, the older mister, looking at you, getting near, says, Très bien, all right. You have to go south, France. You have to go with those two soldiers and to accompany one of my nephew that is come that they would that is waiting outside. Uh, his name is Denis de Comon. By the way, I haven't introduced myself. I am Jacques Nonpar de Comon. You have to come. Pleasure to meet you, sir. You have to accompany them to uh, some of an abandoned mansion of one of my long, rela long related uh, nephew to retrieve some important things for our king. What king things would those be? And I look in just, just being way too curious. What things, sir? The king is looking at you. No, with the Spanish yeah. war against us. And the religious wars, Protestants, and all that. There are some treaties that were signed in that region and put into this mansion. And if I have this, it will just ease the war and have more allies against spy uh, the, the Spanish. Oh, of course, sir. I understand. Philippe looks like he does not understand at all, but oh, yes, yes. Um, the, the cardinal, why he, why a musketeer, Mr. Mr. de Coumont, you can bring your own man there. You have the old older guy saying to the cardinal, my nephew, if you want, is very superstitious, very afraid and uh, very suspicious of what can be there. He's telling fairy tales of strange monsters around there. He's very afraid and Mr. Trevi suggested that he had a musketeer that had the nerves of steel. That is the suggestion of Mr. Trevi. I hope it's worth it because my soldiers are top trained ones. I assure you, sir, my, my nerves are like the finest steel, well-tempered. Cardinal looks at you. Monsieur le roi, this might be a very good choice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I do trust my friend, Trevi. And uh, so you are part of this mission. So help those mister and uh, Denis de Comon. Bring back those treaties that were signed, and yeah, you will be rewarded for that. I can already give you an advance, and he's looking around, slapping his finger, some valets coming from nowhere with a, a plate in their hand, a small bag with some money in it. Take that. 
take that take, for thank your you, mission. Sir. Thank you. Pick it up and just kind of put it in my pouch and not really sure what to do with my to do with it. I mean, throw it in my pouch and just try not trying to maintain my composure the entire time. <laughs> and uh, but but the, the king asked with the to me, why not D'Artagnan for such an important mission? I believe me, Monsieur Le Roy, Philippe, it's my best man for this mission. Oh. I, I will not make you, I will not disappoint you, Your Majesty, sir. And look around to everybody in the room. So, go. I need those treaties fast, fa fast enough. Yes, Your Majesty. Yes. You, 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 you can go. Thank you. Thank you. And he, uh, as you say that, you know, he, he takes his belly again. Don't don't look that that that's fine. It doesn't bother the old Mister Jacques Nompal. Neither the cardinal who's still looking at you going away. Well, his eyes is telling you go away. <laughs> and as as I'm about to leave, I, I just say, your, your Majesty, are you ill? It's all right. And the, the, Mr. Trevi said, come, come. Oh, oh, yes, of course. Okay. You have the two soldiers following you in the halls of... Uh, you have Trevi uh, saying nothing and walking fast. So we have to get ready. I'll, I have called for your lackey will follow you. We will have fresh horses, some rations. Oh. You're coming from the south, isn't it? To the south, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. It's the province of Angoumois. Surprise! Uh, you never told where you came from? Well, you come from Angoumois. <laughs> I've been wondering this for a year. <laughs> it's near Perigord and all those provinces. So you're, you're, you're coming from... Uh, the province of Agumwa. Thank, thank you for, for giving me some backstory. All right, let's go on. <laughs> so, Sir Trevi is giving you some recommendation. He's saying, you have to beware. Beware of the, some rebels, the Krakan. They are trying to raise armies against policies of the king. That's madness. We'll watch out. Do they, they do not have guns, do they? I suppose they do. Take whatever they can to fight the law. So I'll let's be. You have to be ready. And he's turning in front of you and say, "By the way, remember, you're serving France. You're serving your king." Yes, sir. I remember. Perfect. So you're ready for your mission with those misters. So I'll let themselves uh, introduce to you. Thanks. And I turn right around. Hello, I am Philippe. Philippe Moreau. One with the beret on his head said, I'm Grasset. And the other one, a little taller, with long features on his face. And my name is Pompier. Pleasure to meet you. So you are a new musketeer? No, I say? am not new. I am not I new. I am just not as old as D'Artagnan. Mm -hmm. well, well, I think they sent us the recruit. That's what Grasse is saying. A recruit? Not at all. You've never heard of Philippe Moreau? I'm famous already. No, we don't know who you are. Well, you will know by the time we, we finish with this. Have you been to this mansion before? Never. So, what you let's start. I hope you're fast enough and stay behind. 
just in case we we have an attack, we can protect you. <laughs> Oh, how much must I endure today? But I, I, I must not make, I must not embarrass Monsieur de Tuvi, So I'm going to try to remain calm. Well, you have a message from Avada. Your horse is ready. Your lackey is there with the horse, and the horse of those misters are there. And Monsieur Denis de Comon is waiting outside. Ah, Denis. Good to see you. Will you be joining us? We could use an extra he, man. He's looking at you and says, is it the one I asked for? And uh, I say, yeah. Yeah, he sent us the musketeer. Probably, I don't know. Maybe he, he'll run as the on the first sound he'll heard in the forest. Thinking that it's a ghost, then you have to go. You have the new comment. Don't say anything like that. What I saw was real. What did, what did you say? Seeing that you seem to, you know, you believe, you seem to believe him, he says, the old mention of my, my grandfather, every time I tried to get near, I heard sounds, screams in the night. It was not human, it was not animal. I don't know what it was. Hmm. He has too much imagination, says Pompier. Maybe you did not have enough. I believe you. But it is not the first time that I have faced uh, danger. I also have heard some rumors. This is uh, maybe I, by your accent, you're coming from the Angoumoua province? That is right. We're going in a place, maybe you've heard of it. It's called La Forêt des Hurlements. Forest of Screams. The forest of Screams. E okay, maybe put you some backstory. Well, your father told you not to go near a place that was called like that. He really beware you. Don't go there, you'll get lost. And lots of strange rumors. Probably a count, you know, a couple of years before, before you were born, you used to live there and there was a witch hunt that was led into that forest. And still that time you have bedtime stories to make to you go in bed. Your older brother is saying, if you don't sleep, uh, all the ghosts from La Forêt de Lema will come to haunt you in the night and uh, uh, kidnap you. <laughs> we have stories of that. And Denis de Comon. The Comon is a name that comes, okay, that mystery, some sort of a low life baron. When you left your village of Montbron, yeah, I have found the name of a village. You come from Montbron. All right. Oh. Uh, okay, there's a tax on the peasants that is called La Taille. And La Taille uh, is a very heavy tax that the nation is asking from peasants. Your father and your family was quite well organized, so they couldn't manage the Taille, but that is something that was kind kind of hard on the, the money. So, yeah, the, the, this, this was a nasty tax. Right. And that, that Mr. Denis de Como was the one asking your father. You remember, yeah, you, you kind of saw his face before, came to your house asking money from your father. And your father, well, had an argument some of the last time with the guy saying that he didn't have nothing and you know they had to negotiate and you have to pay for the king he was saying that he's so he's looking at you yeah you're looking at a guy who had uh, arguments with your father <laughs> oh but i'm on a mission for the king so remembering all these things from my childhood remembering remembering 
the Forest of Screams, which scared me as a kid, but now sounds thrilling. <laughs> I fought the Wendigo. This is the Forest of Screams. So that could be nothing. So yeah, Monsieur Comon, uh, the new Comon says, so I'm ready. Uh, I, it's an order from the king. Uh, it's the first time I will go back since my childhood to this place. I Last time I saw it, it was still a still standing building. Monsieur de Como is older than you. We will we will go. We will be all right. I will I will protect you. Right. So uh the travel begins. Yeah, uh you have to go outside Paris and it's quite a long voyage uh to to, to Angoumois. Okay, just getting, uh, getting well, skipping a couple of time. You get to uh, near where you used to live, cut well a couple of miles in fact, and that's where you have at some point stop and uh, rest to a a hen on the road. Mr. De Como is asking that we'll have to eat and uh, take some, th 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 drink something here before we get on. It's been a, a whole day since you've been traveling. Unless you want to do something special during that day. No, no, no I'm enjoying being out on, on the horse, out in the country. Well, Jacques is saying, well, good thing uh, to, that we stop somewhere to drink. Isn't it, Master? Huh? Yes. Uh, yes, Jacques. Two. That is it. Two? Not, not two bottles. Two for me? Two glasses. Okay. Two bottles. Two glasses. I I'll go there. And he I am not going to lift you onto the horse, old man. <laughs> you are kidding on yourself. Uh, well, he's taking... Well, I'll take your horse, Master. And he's taking uh, your horse by the bride. <laughs> His own, and you have Grass and Pomp. You're throwing their brides to, to your lackey. We have a lackey for all of us. <laughs> I turn. No, he is a musketeer's lackey. Well, he has to be useful for us too. Uh, you, 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 I think that's we find you useful because of your lackey. That's Pomp. You're taunting you. I think you will find me to be useful because of my sword. And you should risk, dress me with some respect. I am a king's musketeer, not some peasant boy. Well, we're we're great soldiers of one of the most trusted commanders the king ever had. And we have won wars for, for our king. While you are parading the street of Paris dressed like that, We guard the king himself and the king's palace. Luxury and all that. Suddenly you hear in the you know in the tavern. Uh, well, there are the there are there's an argument. You can hear uh, some furnitures being tossed around. Mister de Como is in there. That's what Gas is saying. He's in there. Oh, so I run in. Let's see. Already, already. You're, you're the first to arrive on place. You can see that some customers are, well, uh, intimidating uh, Mr. Mr. De Como. He's in the corner and says, I, the, one of the guys saying, I think we'll kill you. All, all you have taken from us and they are uh, well they, they they are taunting him with weapons in hand daggers one of them has a pistol in hand there are three guys three so i take i take my rapier out said gentlemen this man is under my protection they're turning around and you can see, you can see that, that, that there's angry in the eyes we have a representative of the king and the, there's a guy, the guy lifting his gun and says, no, we'll be, we'll be done with you in a moment. And he, he and he's, he's clinking, you know, his, 
I don't know why oh, it's called, but the, the hammer that will hit the power. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Initiative. Initiative. <laughs> A gun, how phenomenal. You like guns. <laughs> oh yes, my favorite, my favorite invention. Well, how much do we have? It would be a three. You're faster than the bandits. Excellent. Well, this man with a gun, I must I must attack him first. Because he is a he's a large threat. Yeah. Between you and him, uh, there's a table. Well, you can there's a table, some chairs on the floor because chairs were thrown around. You can see a terrorized uh, woman with a chicken in her hand, a cooked chicken in her hand, probably the wench of the place. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no. That's what she's saying. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so leaping up onto the table itself, I'm going to slash at him. Yeah, he's following your move, but you're fast. So you're slash at him directly? Yes, a slash at him directly. Uh, and that is with a ridiculous pool of dice. And a terrible roll without just five successes. Well, it's it's enough to 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 wound him. You no, know, he you, you you have reached his stone score, so uh, he's getting backward two paces. You have Mr. De Como running outside by a back door, and the two others, well, one of them is running at him while the other get try to to push the table on the floor to make you to fall to make you fall. So we'll make a uh, well some sort of a body roll. Um, a brawl. Acrobatics, uh, athletics. What am I doing? Well, you can defend with the uh, acrobatics. Excellent. I will. I will defend with some acrobatics and and synergize with athletics. Yeah, you uh, have to. Yes, I will. Definitely. With uh, five, five successes. Tell me. Uh, well, you can see that he's pushing the table, but he's sliding himself on the floor, so the table kind of lift a little, but he's getting be under it. But because you did some acrobatic deeds, you don't follow what is going on right now. As, have... as, as, as he's pushing a table, going under, I'm leapfrogging right over him <laughs> as if we're playing a game. So he's able to push the table over, and I just jump over him like we're two children playing, playing leapfrog. By the way, you had a, an amazing success. Letting he rolled a zero. Yeah. So, yeah. So he, he, he drops on the floor, hit his head on the floor. So both of the guys, that was a menace, the one with the gun and the other one on the, under the table, are stunned. So their next turn, they just recover from their stun. Right. What are you doing? Well, as, as you know, after la landing on the floor like a cat, it's going, ha ha! I realize, yeah. well, they're not really a threat at this moment. I must run after the other one that is chasing my charge because it's no matter how good I look, if I don't protect this man, this will not go well. So I run out of the tavern. Okay. Outside say, there are. And I say, excuse okay. me, miss, to the wench as they run by with the woman uh, with the chicken. And she's kind of <gasps> and looking all around. Okay. So you're outside. Outside, uh, well, uh, behind, you can see some chickens going around. There's a stream uh, with a strong current, and you see, you can see Mr. Como beside the stream, and you have two guys trying to push in in the, stre in the stream. The one that was running after, and another one that was, that was you know, uh, waiting outside. And you can hear, well, you can see by your side, Pompier and Grasset fighting Four other men, but they are ju just beside the building, a little away, just beside the stable, and they are fighting them. So yeah, uh, phenomenal. 
So, what do I do? I run past Jacques. Yeah. I grab the bottle of wine out of his hand that he had because clearly he did not <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I grab the bottle of wine and I'm going to try to smash it over the head of one of the men that are trying to drown my poor, my poor charge. All right. So make a melee score. Right, I guess. Um, with, since it's not an appropriate weapon, I think there's a penalty minus two, something like that. Or am I mixing up some games? <laughs> I think it's probably that's probably uh, reasonable. Not exactly fencing, so that's probably be quite a penalty. So yeah, well, let's go with the minus two on that. Yeah, okay, that that sounds. But uh, well, minus two, but it will give non-lethal. Well, right. melee minus two. Go ahead. Yeah, that's three, three none. Well, okay. The bottle breaks on his neck. He's foul. He, he, he drops. The other one. Well, it, that was a guy that came out. That this is a new one. That trying to push Mister Gas in the water. Will he succeed? He's a noble. Try to defend himself. And. He's being tossed and pushed into the cold December water in the strong current. Make a perception test. All right. Uh, as I grab, look for the red die. Uh, that is a two. That is a two. Um, all right. Make. Just in time, you can see someone beside the uh, the, from the other side of the building was is pushing a hay cart towards you. He was trying to ram you with it for you to fall in the water, but you see him just in the last second. Right. I see him, so I'm going to tumble out of the way as fast as I can. Make which is a skill. Check. Which is a skill. Yeah. Okay. That is two, two successes. I also have two successes, which you are hit by the card, but not pushing the water. You're just, just you know, be, beside the water, just maybe one foot more, you know, one inch more, and you would fall into, you know, you, you would fumble on, into a rock to fall in the water into the, the rapids, you know, the, the strong stream. Oh, but now, now my charge is in the water. This is not good. Yeah, I don't know to swim. <laughs> oh, how far has he has he has he drifted away from us at this point? Ten feet. Ten feet. Is that uh, running? Uh, you know, similar to a you know running pace. Right. So I, I decide to ignore my attackers at this moment and start to run along the side of the stream looking for, a, looking for the first branch I can find to, to extend to him because I don't want to get into the water. Okay. This will be a... Uh, you will have either to roll your move. You can synergize with your acrobatics because this will be... There are trees and you know it's not, it's not flat at all. Okay, you can also fall, so that will be a hard difficulty. Okay. So as I run, that is only that is three successes, which is one less. Oh. Uh, this is a simple failure. Well, you have your two feet in the water, the cold water, right? And you can okay, and you have. Um, Bandits. Okay. Um, you can hear the gun fire, probably the guy, and you can see him between trees, not so far from you. you can make a defense check. You can. Right. You like guns. <laughs> Love guns. 
That is four successes. <laughs> Goodness. Okay. The bullet just push in the water beside you. Yeah, you are splashed by the bullet hitting the water. There in the branch. All right. Well then, I can glance back over my shoulder to see if anybody else has another weapon ready. If it is not, they're not ready. Then I will extend uh, no, the bridge. They, well, they try to follow you, but they're not. You know, they're not as a. You, you know, you're you're not. Uh, they're not that as agile as you. Right. So I push the branch towards. Uh, towards the knee and, and just say, grab on, grab on. You have to make a feat of strength. Okay. The current is strong. It will be in the poles roll. Okay. The, the current has a strength of four. The current has a strength of, three, of four. Sorry. The, the strength, the strength of three, yeah. Oh. Well. The strength is double your strength. You know that? Right. This man is important. Anyway. I will spend two style. I will I will give myself two more dice. That is six. Six successes. Well, currently you have an amazing success. How amazing you catch Denis de Comon. The one who was uh, taking all the money from your family before. All right. So reaching the branch towards him, hopefully, you know, he grabs on some of, a bit. And I pull on the branch as hard as I can, pulling him almost in, completely out of the water. Right. right. And one... I just I... – go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. Sorry. And I, I say to him, as I pull him out of the water, the next time you go around collecting taxes, you should try to be a little bit nicer. This causes a lot of problems. Wait till we talk to my father. Then I just drop <laughs> drop everything and try to run back towards my... Uh... You, yeah. You, take, you took one non-lethal damage from the coal of the water. Okay. Well, your, uh, your mister is freezing. He right. doesn't respond to any you did. It. Uh, he's in shock. Okay. Then, one of the guy... The, the uh, well the the other one that was that slipped under the table right it's coming at you with uh, uh, well with the club in hand and he, he's jumping at you he's a is a is a little on a higher ground than you because coming from be, between two trees right. um I think it, you should make a new initiative for that I think so. Okay, great. Two. Two. Uh, dexterity you have? Uh, three. You're you're faster. That's good. That's good. Because I've had about enough of these guys. <laughs> uh, that is six. What do you do exactly? I slash at him right across his chest. I, I really have had it with these guys. I'm not, I'm not playing around, so I'm 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 trying to hurt or completely disable these people. Well, he once again, ah, and he, you know he's rolling on the ground and falls in the water and he's being drawn by the current and the pain of what you did for him, uh, you know, prevents him from swimming properly. So you can see him. Go away, and at some point, his head disappeared in the water. Good. <laughs> I'm so angry at this point. Good. You have Denis coming, and uh, you you have the two of uh, your your two new friends and Jacques coming, Grassin Pompier. We got rid. Some of them fled away, but Mister de Como come. We will. Uh, will hit you in the the tavern. And Jacques say, well, this is dangerous traveling. More dangerous than Paris, master. Yes, yes. Now give me a hand with him. Help me bring him inside. 
And thanks for the wine. Thank you very much. On your way back to the tavern, you see one of the dead corpse. Uh, one of the two soldiers fought with them. And the face, you recognize the face of the man that is on the ground. Huh. Used to be a childhood friend. Someone from Montbron. Someone called Jean used to be a great friend of yours. And even then, you know, when you, well, when you departed to Paris, he was still working for your father. Now he's lying dead on the ground. And I, I stop. I, just, I let Jacques go with the, with the, with my, uh, with my charge. I, was like, I just kneel on the ground. I can't believe it. Him. You have Grasse beside you. That croquin, that rebel, deserved. Huh? All those rebels deserve to die, and that's what they, we gave them. This, this man was a friend of mine when I was a boy. I don't understand. Well, turns against the law. Try to raise some armies, making civil wars. Maybe encouraged by the mother of the king, Madame de Medicis. I don't know. So much is going around. This is chaos. I would watch what you say about the king's mother. We'll just open up something. Uh, Ivan, here for your more formation, the king and his mother are not in good terms. <laughs> right, that's true, that's true, that's true. But nevertheless, he is not being very, the, the Grasse is not being very kind. It does, does not have kind words against uh, Marie de Medicis. So. Right. Well, Philippe doesn't like anybody saying anything about his mother. But yes, I do recall that history lesson. But yeah, just, yeah. I'm just, I just look around though. I'm just confused. You remember Jean being so proud that you were to go to the musketeer. You remember when everyone, your family, Fedette, waving at you, saying, telling you good luck. I'm gonna drag. I'm gonna drag his body over to by the by the end. Not just leave it here by the stream. And covered up with a covered up with a blanket that I, I find just to just to at least be somewhat decent. Yeah, Jacques coming beside you. You knew him. Yes, this is Jean. He used to work for my father. And now he's a was a rebel. Died here for no cause. You know Bringing that uh, well, that tax. Father. That tax. It well, has made yeah. a lot of people very mad. Of course, but the, that Pompier soldier saved me from Jean, as you call him. He was about to thrust a, a, a dagger through my throat. I do not know what... This is a difficult thing, Jacques. I do not understand. Me either. I think I need to drink on that. Yes, that might be a good idea, but two. Glasses. <laughs> Get in the tavern and take a style point for that the flamboyant combat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And all the risk that you took. Well, you have a shocked lady serving you. You have Mr. Uh, de Comont, Denis de Comont. Uh, well, obviously took some non-lethal wounds. But he will be okay. He seemed a little exhausted, but uh, he says that it's okay. I, I can lead you to the mansion of uh, my my, uh, my uncle, uh, my father, my grandfather. Sorry. Yes, that would be a good thing, and perhaps we should avoid as many uh, encounters with the town folk as we can possibly muster here. 
your text has been not well received. Uh, this is money for our nation. That's what is paying many things. In a way, that's what is paying your salary. I understand. I understand. But I understand that I, this has caused quite a bit of problems amongst the peasantry themselves. I mean, these rebels, they're rebelling against the, the taxes, are they not? Or is it something else? They are also they are angry. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, all the crops has been quite low this year. They're saying they are hungry, but they are more. They have more than enough to, to eat for themselves. Yeah, they have to give a lot of the, the share to as a taxes, but that's making them angry. Yeah. That's why I need an escort, by the way, uh, to protect me against those filthy rebels. Those croquants. Oh. Right now, what we need to do is go get those documents for the king. We can talk politics later. Yeah, of course. Here to follow your orders. You have Grassin Pompier. Well, they saw you fight. They don't pick you. Well, they were pickering you all the way through to this place. And yeah, there are less. Well, they, they are less inspired for that kind of jokes. <laughs> Suddenly. This is good. This is good. You know how to handle a sword, soldier. I do. You did not do so bad yourself. Not so bad yourself. I have seen dangers before. I'm sure I will see them again. But I am not comfortable with the, the populace attacking us. That is not what I am used to. Well, you don't go out from Paris a lot. Not lately, but I grew up around here. It did not used to be like this. Really? You made a good choice of getting, getting away from here. Because people like you, these times around, are killed. Things have changed. I do not understand. I wish... I always seem to be saying I wish Mark Don and Briscoe were here. They would... They would know what to do in situations like this. You have your sword, you know what to do. Don't hesitate. Yeah. That I is Pompier saying that. The taller one. I will not. How much longer till we get there? Another day? Denis says, mm, by the end of the day, before, probably before the, the sun is out, we'll be near the forest. Ah, uh, yes, the Forest of Screams. Oui, la forêt des hurlements. <laughs> well, you, the chicken was uh, well cooked. The beverage were good. You have Jacques upset not taking more of that delicious drink <laughs> they have on the place. You are paying your due to the lady. Right. Uh, and it's time to go. Right. And I, I give, seeing as I'm carrying all this money, you know, I press a few more, a few more coins into the woman's pocket and say, thank you very much for your hospitality. We are sorry for the trouble. Oh, merci. Merci, my lord. Merci, monseigneur. I, Philippe Moreau, King's Musketeer, bid you farewell. Yes. And I kiss her on the cheek. Yes. Oh, your accent. Are you from... The region here? Yes, yes, I did grow up. Moreau, Moreau, is it is it the Mr. Moreau that is living in Montbron? Yes. You look like your father. Thank you, thank you. I I guess. And I'm I sorry. 
You're and sorry. She, uh, For what? My, my, my condolence. You, you don't know? No. Your father... <gasps> well, your father died. No. When? Three, three months ago. Yes. This cannot be true. A, from illness. Oh, I'm so sorry, my lord, that I, I am the one to, to bring you to such bad news. Uh, I thought that he would send you a message in, in Paris. No, I received no message. Oh, oh this I'm day. so sorry. It is okay. It is okay. I will, I will grieve later. I have business for the king. Come on, soldier. We're ready. That is Popier. I am coming. I'm coming. And you have the sorry lady waving at you. And well, shocked again, but from for, for bringing such bad news to a musketeer. She's feeling ashamed of that. Even if she knows that it's not her fault. So I wave goodbye. Au revoir. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Get the back on my horse. Yes, and Jacques, while trying to hold on on his horse. Oh, I'm okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm ready. All for one. If you fall off, I am not picking you up. Not today. Not today. Uh, okay, so he, he's turning around the bride around, around his wrist. I won't fall. I look at him, wondering, do I tell him now mm -hmm. that his former master, do I... I'm looking at Jack, wondering to myself, do I tell him now that his former master is dead? No. No, this will only complicate things. So I just do not fall off the horse, Jack. Right. The road, well, there were the road towers of forest. You you can cross some peasants with carts, so you can see some people. Well, it's December, but they are, you know, cutting woods. When you are passing, you have angry looks at you, you know, people talking to each other like that and looking at you. To, uh, they obviously they, they know what you are, who you are. Well, what what type of people you are. Right. And then you see on the horizon the famous forêt de Hurlement, the this forest of screens. Yeah, the Chateau Quentin de Gaumont. Quentin was the name of his grandfather. You're getting, there's a road, well, entering the forest, which was probably the road that led to the that famous chateau. And some uh, rocks were put in, in the road. Uh, well, they were put there to maybe discourage people to get further, but you have Grassin Pompier getting around the rocks and Denis hesitating, looking at the forest and see he's nervous. And I just, <clears throat> I just dig my heels into my horse and have a jump over the rocks. Your Come on, horse. gentlemen, let's get this gun over with. You can see Jacques trying to do the same, but his horse is not sure. I'll get the round final. I'll... <laughs> Instead. Uh, yeah, you're getting towards the road that hasn't been, uh, you know, taken so from a, since a long time. You can see beside the road something odd. Two bodies, completely burned. Well, they, it's not fresh, but you can see the roast of their skin. Two people that has been burned beside the road. Hmm. You can see Denis, nervous, looking at that. Look at this. I'll jump down off my horse. Just take take a take a closer look at these two bodies. See if there's anybody I know. If I can even 
see any if the remains are impossible well, to see. Some sort of investigative skill? <laughs> of course not. Of course not. <laughs> uh, well, may make a, a a basic reason check. Is it yeah. reason? Mm -hmm. But I will say, Jacques, come to, come help me take a look at this. Okay, he's taking. Jacques, Jacques does have an investigation skill. <laughs> but uh, he, he, he's check. coming, you know. Uh, I don't have his character sheet ready. Uh, He's uh he's investigation of five, but I will I will uh I will do a reason check myself. Okay, so I'll do his investigation. Uh, <laughs> and it better be good because I rolled one. <laughs> he rolled a five. <laughs> he sees clear. And he, you know he, he's oh oh that is interesting. Look at that. What? Look at what? Well, <laughs> you can see the belt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's taking a sword. Was a, a soldier. Oh. And uh, hmm. Well, not an enlisted soldier. Probably, uh, probably some sort of a mercenary. Doesn't have any uh, signs of a, a corp or something. He doesn't take part of a company or anything. But this sword, hmm, well made. And, uh, well, there's a woman and a man. A woman? Ah, the woman. Well, the woman, well, oddly, she, she, she wasn't wearing uh, a dress. Ah, she, she, she was wearing pants. <laughs> pants? What kind of woman would... Oh, well... Anyhow, um, never mind. We'll talk about that later. But you have guesses saying it. These were probably Kraka who burned some people who were serving the king somehow. Yeah, but it, it, Chuck says they looked like mercenaries. They weren't. They weren't regular soldiers. I don't know. This all seems very odd. These were no ghosts that did this. I've been burned recently. Is that I'm ghost? sure of. Hmm. This does not look good. But these are these are not ghosts. These are these are men that do these things. <sighs> That's why I say Krakan. I do not. I do not know. But I know we must be on the lookout. Let me get back up on my horse. Let's keep riding. Just look around yourself, though. Be 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 ready. Yeah. Uh, on your way on that road, uh, at some point you can see a uh, well uh, on the ground the skeleton of someone, and by the look of it, another one that seemed to have been burned. Again. Well, Jacques, what do you make of this one? <laughs> Been there longer. <laughs> you are brilliant, Jacques. You are sobering up, too. I can see it in your voice. Maybe it's the cold. Uh, okay. Um, right. Uh, well, you're getting near... Uh, well, there, there's some sort of a clearing that seems to be somewhere in the middle of that forest. And you can see the runes of uh, the, the runes of a uh, sorry the runes of, of the, the remaining of a castle. And I have uh, well, I have something to show you for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Theater of the mind sometimes. No. <laughs> I will send you a link right now. Uh, I think. Let's see. Yeah, in the chat. All right. Ah. Let's see. So, you get. You have the, the remainings of the castle. All right. 
function. Uh, oh, yeah, I want to share a screen. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I want. Share that. Yeah. I see. Okay, so you have you have the castle. You can uh, you you can move the pieces. The P the the blue P is you G J is Grasse, P is Pompier, and C is uh Como, the Nid Como. I see. Okay. Como, I will place his token uh, on the right place, says, Well, I uh, I have to go there. I'll play. Okay. But uh, every time I got near, it's the first time I don't hear the famous scream. And Pompeo says, it's because there are no streams, Mr. Le Como. Probably some animals. It could be. It could be. So I follow. I follow him. Okay. I'm, I'm charged to protect him. Good. So, uh, well, he's entering. I will, I will just make it. Well, he's entering by this place and then get some in in the rooms. So you're yeah. beside him? Yeah. Okay. So Grasset and Pompier will check the surroundings just in case. I don't have a Jacques, but we, we, I can make something for Jacques uh, just really fast. Yeah, here. <laughs> little Jacques. A little. With his, <laughs> with his taking, well, the taking a piss somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> At this point. Right. Probably um, drinking the other bottle of wine that I don't know about. Yes. Okay. Well, you have Mr. Como, uh, which is searching a key in his pocket and is looking around very nervous. And he's looking at you. You're the one who was believing me. Yes, yes. Every time I try to get near this place. Yeah, I saw those burned bodies before. And you, you have. Yeah. Don't know what it is doing this. Why didn't you mention it until now? You well, saw the bodies on the road. Why didn't you say something? I didn't know what to say. You could have said, I have seen this before. You are a funny man. I I'm just too afraid. You are not afraid, of, too afraid to take people's money. But that is for another discussion. Yes, that is. Ah, and okay, it used to be there and he's pointing a place a um that is that that has rocked over it so yeah I, we have to, to 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 leave the rock there but i am just a little too tired can you help me mr moho yes of course of course it's like i will go in to help okay so hmm you can hear far away a strange screamer <laughs> What was that? that? You can hear Jacques far away. Is that you, Master? Yes, Jacques, everything is fine. <laughs> well, as fine as I can see, there's something in the air. That doesn't seem fine. It's well, flying. Flying? You can see Como be getting very nervous. So, and we wait have here. to wait here. Yes, I'm, I, going to, I'm going to bolt, bolt right over where Jack is. Okay, so take your. Okay, well, okay, you have Jack over there, so you can uh, you you take your uh, token uh, where yeah. you want. Okay, Jack to be right. You have Grasse looking up. You can see something flying there. Strange. It looks like a big bat, but has a long neck and a you know straight long beak, and doesn't seem to have any feathers, and is flying over. 
and he 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 he, he chars he he get over Gasset, and then Gasset is looking at I and he says, "I'll get the gun at my horse. I'll try to shoot that 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 turkey." That is no turkey. I would uh, I would try to get under something. You may try to shoot it, but I'm sure other people have tried to shoot that before. As he gets near his horse with a very worried look, the, the creature is making another strange creature, like, ah, ah, ah. and as he's doing that, it's doing that, something come, the, the, the creature gets over Grasse and something coming out of its beak, some sort of a liquid, taking Grasse by surprise, and he's just all wet from that. And, ah, that is disgusting, and as he, he tosses himself, he, he's taking, he's looking at his hand, it's kind of, ah, stinky oil. Oil. And I look at him, he's like, do not fire your gun. No, I won't. I think he, Pompier, come here, get your gun. And you can see the bird Flying, you know, uh, turning around on the top of uh, on the top of your head. What are you doing? Uh, I look at Jacques and say, "Jacques, run!" <laughs> I'm running back, running back towards. Uh... Okay, you got towers of forest there. Towers, yeah. Um, right. I'm trying to run see. under and run under cover. Okay, you can hear a strange voice talking. It's coming from, I'll, I will show you, you can hear the echoes. I will make another little circle or another, well, another shape. Let's make a happy face. It's coming. There's a movement coming from here. Ah. And yeah. And you can hear something, and you can see on this on Grasset coming from nowhere, some fire igniting him, and he suddenly goes burst into a ball of flame, and he's screaming, ah! he's rolling around, trying to stop the fire. Oh, Jock, help him! Help put him out! Grab a blanket. He's running towards. Uh, Jacques will try to uh, uh, stopping a fire. Just, just have a blank memory for fire. But uh, uh -huh. why isn't drugs fire? Caustic. Dexterity, yeah, that is dexterity equal to the fire damage. Hmm. Some sort of a uh, well, say well. This is the that is a chemical fire. Oh yeah, probably. It's not good. Well, Jacques is trying to to stop the fire, and it, I can't help him. You can see the creature going around, but more than that, you can see someone coming. Someone that wasn't there. Coming out. Some sort of a lady. That is, well, that doesn't seem to be, that seems to be some sort of a dead corp. Walking towards you, uh, or, well, you can see the remains of tattoos on her arm. She has bondage eyes, you know, she has something hiding her eyes, and she's coming towards you ah, with a tongue. That must be four foot long. Well, I draw my sword. This, this I can understand and fight. Something flying in the air. I think Jacques would be better off trying to shoot at it. This I can understand. Right. <laughs> so I right. walk right towards her. Make an initiative uh, check. <laughs> And it's a two. Uh, 
All right, you're faster than uh, this monster. That is good. What are you doing? I am going to run up to it and try to slash at it. Maybe even trying to cut its tongue off. <laughs> Whatever. The closest part. So. Right on. It's getting towards you. That is seven successes. Right. Your sword hit the tongue, but it's just as it has, it's the same as it, it have, would have hit in a rock. And the tongue gets around your sword. Oh. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, there's a problem home. Just a, a second. This is a cliffhanger right here. The tongue is hard as a rock around my sword. One burning guard. Jacques, what is Jacques doing? Probably getting drunk by now. Probably, probably running for his life and getting drunk. Huh. Oh. Well, let's see. During my first adventure, I almost got burned to death. <laughs> Today? It could be the same. We will find out. Uh, I have a problem at home. One of my kids is sick. Ah, I understand. I'm sorry. I really have to stop the broadcast. So we'll have I to, be, to be continued. <laughs> It is a uh, what is a good cliffhanger? That is a good cliffhanger. Uh, I think we stopped this right time. So we'll talk to each other as soon as we can to make the follow up of that, right? Yep, absolutely. No, that that's a good that's a good place to end. <laughs> Perfect. So all right. Uh, well, see you. Uh, see see you soon. Bye. Yep.